Today we're going to be taking a look at villagers and how to give them a profession. If you've been playing Minecraft for any sort of time, you're likely to have run across a village. A uh, village is kind of this generated area where there's little houses and hopefully it's not an abandoned village and there's actually villagers who have inhabited it, are walking around and you're going, hey, this is great. There's people here, but I don't know what to do with it. And so today we're going to walk you through how to take those villagers, give them a profession and turn that around to use it to your advantage to be able to start trading for much needed resources within the game. So we're going to take a look here in my tutorial world. I've created kind of a setup with different villagers so that you can see how to give them a profession and what they, um, what they can offer for you. So we're going to switch to first person view here and we're going to go inside this little closed off area. Now, one of the things when it comes to villagers that I want to let you know first is there's three types of villagers that you need to be aware of. The first one is a regular villager. This guy sitting in the mine cart, he's got his brown tunic on and depending on the biome that you're in within Minecraft, they'll have a slightly different look to them. Uh, but generally it's all the same. And the basic villager when they're first born is always going to have that brown tunic. Now over to his side, you've got this green tunic villager. He is what's referred to as a nitwit. And the reason they call him a nitwit is because he's completely useless within the game. He doesn't have a job. He doesn't uh, mine or uh, mine. He doesn't uh, do anything with the resources in the village. He just walks around. He also doesn't sleep the same schedule that the other villagers do. He's completely backwards in that regard. And then the other type of villager you're going to run into is this little guy over here. That's a baby villager. So when villagers create more villagers, you're going to have baby villagers. It takes time for them to grow. There's nothing you could do with a baby villager other than wait for it to become an adult. And then at that point you could look at giving it a profession. So before I show you how to give them a profession, I want to let you know the different types of, um, materials, so to speak, that you're going to need. So you can see them here. If you want to build an armor, you need a blast furnace. If you want to have a butcher, you need a smoker. If you want to have a cartographer, you need a cartography table. That makes sense. For a cleric, you need a brewing stand. For a farmer, it's a composter. Fisherman is a barrel. Fletcher is a fletching table. Leather worker, you need a cauldron. Now with the leather worker, the cauldron must have water in it. If it's an empty cauldron like you see here, nothing's going to happen. So make sure that that cauldron has water. Uh, for a librarian, you need a lectern. A mason, uh, you need a stone cutter. For a shepherd, you need a loom. For the toolsmith, it's a smithing table. And lastly, the weaponsmith, you need a grindstone. So now that I've kind of walked you through the types of villagers and the types of uh, tools that you're going to need in front of them in order to give them a profession, uh, I'm going to show you in just a moment when we come back how you actually give them their profession and start using it to your advantage. So stick around. <laughs> Okay, so we're sitting in front of our villager. We want to know how do I take this plain clothed villager and turn him into an armorer? And the way the mechanics work in Minecraft is villagers will walk around to do the thing, but when you when they end up walking in front of uh, one of these types of um, utilities that I've shown you, whether it be the blast furnace, the lectern, whatever, if the villager does not already have a profession assigned to it and it has not conducted a trade, it will slit, switch its profession. Um, in the case of all of these villagers, they don't have a profession. They're just a simple brown coat villager. So in this case, I'm going to uh, take the villager and I'm going to move him towards the blast furnace. Now for the purposes of you being able to see, I'm going to use a fishing rod. There we go. So you can see here that as he moved into the blast furnace, he switched his uh, skin. He looks different. He's now got his goggles on. He's got a different type of profession. And so if I now walk up to this armorer and I right click him, I see that I can now make trades. Um, you'll see that in this case, I can trade nine emeralds for iron boots or 14 emeralds for iron chest plate. Now, if you're seeing here, what's changed is the emeralds used to be four and nine. 
uh, when I was trying to fishing rod that villager, he suddenly got these angry, like smoke steam things above his head. So right now I've heard a villager and they're actually charging me higher prices for these trades because I've hurt him. So we're going to skip away from that. I'm also just going to clear the weather here so that you can see a bit better. Um, so I'm going to show you now a way of moving the villager in so that I, I don't lose out on some trades. So I'm going to bounce in behind him and push him forward with the minecart, And you'll see that he's now changed his skin as well. He had those little green stars around him. And this one has now become a butcher. So I can now trade some raw chicken for emeralds or some raw rabbit. And I'm just going to go down the line and take all of these um, villagers, give them a bit of a profession. For the purposes of this demonstration, putting them in mine carts is the only way to keep them from walking around and having them stay in front of the um, skill table that they're in front of. Now, everybody's had their switch, so we now have uh, the weapon smith in front of the grindstone. When it comes to villager trading, right here you see weapon smith novice. Right off the hop, you're going to have little trades. In this case, there's only two trades you can make. The more you trade with a villager, the more experience it's going to get, and eventually it's going to level up. So if I have 15 coal and I want to trade for an emerald, um, it's going to add his experience bar for every trade that I make. And so for this purpose, I'm just going to um, switch into creative mode here. I'm going to give myself a whole bunch of coal. Oops. And I'm going to try and make a trade with him. So I'm going to click that. Oh, I need to give myself 15. That wasn't helpful. Okay, but I'm going to show you that. See how he's holding the emerald? That lets you know that you're holding a resource uh, that he would like to do a trade with. And so as you go down the line, they'll be like, oh, yes, I want to do that. This guy not holding an emerald because he doesn't want coal. Same here, same here. None of them want coal. Now, with each of these, um, you're going to be able to make unique trades based on what they will offer to you. So I go to cartographer, I can now trade for paper and empty maps. The more that upgrades, you're going to eventually get to the point where it's a master cartographer and you'll be able to trade for things like maps to woodland mansions and, um, you know, ocean monuments, that kind of stuff. So in order to see kind of a villager trading post in action, I'm going to take you to the Minecraft server that we've created here on category five. And we've built this room that's protected all of the villagers uh, from outside mobs and stuff like that. But you can see that each of the crafting tables is in front of them and all of them have their professions. And some of them have signs in front that say master. So if I go over here to the lectern and I take a look at this villager and I open up for trades, I see that the librarian is now a master and you can see all of the different trades that I can make with him and some of the discounts I get. Now, the reason I'm getting these significant discounts is uh, over in the corner, I've got Hero of the Village on right now. And that's because I defeated a raid uh, last time I logged in. But you'll see I can trade for name tags, for clocks, for compass, uh, for glass blocks, for lanterns. So different things that you can can build or craft, find whatever in, in the Minecraft world, but it just saves you a bit of time. So here's a cartographer, and I was mentioning uh, just a few minutes ago that when they're at a higher level, you can get maps for things like Woodland Explorer map or an Ocean Explorer map. That's going to take me to an ocean monument. Um, one thing I'd mention uh, to you is we've shown you the zombie grinder, uh, zombie experience grinder. With that, you're going to get a lot of rotten flesh. And for the cleric, you're going to be able to trade that rotten flesh for emeralds. So effectively, you use these two to your advantage and you will have an unlimited supply of emeralds that you don't have to go mining for. So that gives you an example of the benefits of Minecraft when you use the mechanics to your advantage, how you go, oh, if I do this and then I do that, I got this. Uh, so that's really the basics of how this works. Uh, how it comes to giving your villagers professions. So you, if you do run across a village, uh, you know, take the resources that you've got, build one of those different crafting tables for what you need, and then have a villager walk up to it. If you want to continue trading with them on a regular basis, kind of block them in and make a bit of a, like a villager trading post, so to speak, and then you'll be able to make trades all you want. And that's the basics of villager professions and how uh, you can make them customized to what you want.